Welcome to the Arts Catalyst and, and also hello to people who are watching in live stream land. Uh, this has been a very popular event so we haven't been able to get in everybody who could come and I think there are probably people watching from around the globe as well. Thousands. <laughs> uh, so this is part of Lab Easy. Uh, we invited the wonderful Mad Lab from Manchester down to run a two-week DIY <coughs> bio laboratory um, and workshop in our space. Uh, and uh, Asa Kalo and Rachel Turner isn't with us, have been the main instigators and uh, maestros of the last couple of weeks. Uh, and gradually we seem to have gathered a whole bunch of DIY bio experts from around the world. We've, we've had people turning up from uh, New York, Zagreb, Ljubljana, Copenhagen, Paris, Cork, uh, in, and we'll hopefully get them all introduced this evening. I'll also mention Marc Dusselier particularly because he's been running uh, some of the workshops and um, Mark describes himself as a rogue scientist, which is uh, very in keeping. So uh, tonight uh, we've been running lots of workshops and there have been lots of experiments happening um, around the place, which I think Asa will tell you more about. Uh, tonight we're just going to have some talks from various DIY bio people who have been around for the last week and a half, uh, and a bit of a conversation about DIY bio and where it's going. So I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Asa to run the evening. Thank you very much. Talking to the right one, so if you see me talking like this, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thank, thank you very much for coming along. Uh, it's, 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 it's been absolutely fantastic being down here uh, to run the uh, oh, some kind of husky. Okay, there's um, but yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic being here for like the past, uh, past week and a half and having the opportunity to set up uh, the lab easy um, in, in this space. Um, which we'll be talking through in a second. So, so the lab easy, kind of what is it? Um, so you know, it's, we use the, the word lab um, in, the, in the loosest possible sense, in a very similar way to how we use, uh, we use it in mad lab. Um, so it's less, less a lab than, uh, than a fully blown research institution. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, you know why, why stop at one lab? So we have, uh, we have multiple, multiple labs uh, that have been running in the space over, over the past what, week and a half. Um, so we've, uh, over here we have the edible lab, so uh, otherwise known as kind of the fermentation zone. There's kind of lots of sort of various bacteria and moulds uh, which we've put to work uh, making interesting things for us to eat and drink. Um, so we had a fantastic session on, uh, on Sunday um, looking at some of those. Uh, we have uh, over, at the, over at the other end we have the inedible lab. Uh, as you can see, they're kind of as, about as far away from each other as we can get them. Um, so the, the, this is where the, uh, the results of our, our um, genetic modification and synthetic biology for beginners workshop are kind of nestled in the uh, plastic box marked do not lick content, uh, along with some other kind of very sort of miscellaneous moulds and kind of sort of unspecified things that we found sort of out in the parks and in the street, which probably shouldn't be licked either, or they're less, less, uh, less of a risk. Uh, we have the instrumentation zone over here. We've kind of been bu busy sort of building kind of bits of equipment. So you've got things like uh, like, like Gino's absolutely fantastic um, centrifuge, which he's built out of an old hard drive and uh, on the top of a uh, of a plastic bottle. Uh, it's absolutely great. It works just as well as you know, a piece of lab equipment you find in a, uh, in, a sort of in a commercial or academic setting. Uh, and we also have um, over, over in the back, very, very, very small. One section of the shelves in the back is set over, set over as the um, the mouse taxidermy lab, uh, which I think pretty much speaks for itself. Yeah, well, I'm not sure what that's gone to. It's kind of, it seems to have disappeared off the shelf at some point. Maybe someone's nabbed it. It was particularly good, particularly good piece of art. Um, so yeah, so, so, thank, thank you very much. I'd just like to very briefly, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, visit the pieces to, to the mad lab. Uh, and what MADLAB is. Uh, so Mad MADLAB is short for uh, Manchester Digital Laboratory. Simon Ross, right cursor button if you will. Or, or, the, or the art button. There we go, that, that, that's good. And go on, one more. Just for, you know, that was the practice one. Okay. That was the left. Yeah, good. Yeah, almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Excellent. Fantastic. Uh, very good. So, so MADLAB was uh, when we first set up, 
uh, whenever it was about four years ago. Uh, it was short for Manchester Digital Laboratory. Um, and the digital has become less and less important as time has gone on, which we were very, very keen on from the outset. Um, the, it's, the, it's, as you can see, it's a, a three-storey, um, 3,000 square foot, uh, enormous ramshackle former weaver's cottage from the Industrial Revolution. So it's got some fantastic industrial history in there as well, um, which, we, which we pack with various things, sort of ranging from the sort of wholly, wholly sensible, um, like um, technology for the, the volunteer sector, through to the utterly ridiculous, um, like like DIY, Bio, for instance. Um, and things like so we've got like field recording groups in there. We've got reading groups, writers groups, um, filmmakers, photographers, uh, lots of programmers, um, electronics, all kinds of different things. And they all kind of like smash together at different kind of times. And when these sort of different kinds of worlds collide and different kind of experiences collide, it's sort of interesting things come out of it. So it's been it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think when, when we set it up, we didn't really have a clear idea about what it was going to turn into, um, but we're very, very happy about what it turned into, so that's absolutely great. Um, so, the Lab Easy was, I suppose, born out of um, our involvement in, in DIY bio. Uh, and, and, and to go a step a little bit further back, in terms of why we're involved in DIY bio, uh, I suppose, look at a, uh, so back in 2009, went to a conference over in the States, over in San Francisco, it was just absolutely brilliant. Uh, we were introduced to two things, one of which was the space noise bridge, um, which is a, a, a hacker space um, that's been running since 1996 uh, in the Bay Area. It's just absolutely this incredible, just kind of a place of concentrated creativity uh, in the Mission District in San Francisco, which is brilliant. And, and the other one was going to a, a conference session on, uh, on do-it-yourself biology. Um, which was like roughly like sort of 45 minute kind of conference session, you know, sit down, you go like, okay, great, you know, someone's going to tell me some things. And they go like, no, we're not going to tell you things, we're going to make you genetically modify things. <laughs> so in 45 minutes they had everybody sort of get up out of the audience, kind of sort of pile forwards and sort of do this kind of sort of really, really simple sort of E. coli modification principle, <coughs> where you made E. coli glow in the dark. Um, and then uh, I think it was kind of, you know, the, I keep on saying this to people, they go, they, they let you do, do what? Uh, so at that point they let us pop it in our pockets and walk off, um, <laughs> which was rather, rather good. With a, uh, if you wouldn't mind bleaching it and sticking it in the bin, uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's brilliant. So it's lo loads of people kind of walking out the door with sort of like glow in the dark E. coli. And I was like, this is fantastic. This, you know, this, why, why didn't I know, you know, know about this before? Um, so we kind of we got to doing um, Mad Lab a lot earlier. I met some absolutely fantastic people um, over in Manchester who were really to have the same kind of to like like-minded kind of attitude. Um, and then so we kind of we got we did that and we sort of got, went off on a, on an excellent sort of adventure and kind of tangents of setting up Mad Lab. And then at some point it was always kind of there, sort of like, like ticking. It was like, well, I really want to do DIY as well. Uh, eventually got the opportunity to do that. So that was via uh, a meeting with somebody at the Science Fiction Book Club. Uh, they were like, well, we work at a local university, it would be great to partner on it and run a, a Wellcome Trust funded um, pilot project of DIY Bio, which was great. So we did that for about 12 months, uh, and then it kind of took on a life of its own. We sort of headed off on, kind of put, drew, drew in more people who were kind of interested in this stuff. We kind of headed off on this sort of excellent kind of tangent. Um, so yes, and then that's kind of what, what brings us what brings us here today. Um, so at the same time, there's kind of you know there's been a real sort of like interest in DIY bio, and kind of, you know, there's been loads and loads of people that sort of getting more and more involved in it from from around the world. Um, it's been absolutely great. We've managed to get uh, a lot of those people kind of, sort of like flown in to to come you know to to come hang out um, sort of and get involved and kind of exchange ideas and exchange knowledge, which has been absolutely brilliant. So very just very very quickly can sort of run run through and sort of point at people in the room who have all come in. So kind of looking, going, pointing over right towards the back, so you have uh, Malta, just over here, from uh, Biologie Garage in Copenhagen. <coughs> uh, Gino, just here, from, uh, from Croatia, from Zagreb. Uh, he's also flown in, that's this amazing biohacker. We've got uh, Christian, just here, from um, Biotechna in, uh, in, in Slovenia. Uh, also, my eyesight's terrible, by the way. Got some of the London biohackers in the house just here. Um, there's Brian Degger from Newcastle, from Transit Lab in Newcastle. 
um, sort of in, in the run of place, and then all, all these guys here as well. So you have Fit Kahal, Gavi from Cork, uh, Mark Bissier from Hacteria, and then to my right, I have uh, Thomas, Thomas Londrian from La Paillasse in Paris, and Ellen Jorgensen from Genspace. Um, so it's a really, really good kind of, sort of mix of some key people, like a mix of sort of DIY kind of experiences uh, that we've got in the room today. Um, so I think that's, yeah, I won't carry on any further. Um, so I think it'd be it, just for a full, the format for the evening. Um, so we're going to uh, hand over to, to these guys um, to tell you a little bit more about kind of the, their sort of background, kind of why they got involved in sort of in, in DIY bio or biohacking or bio tweaking or call it what you will. Um, and then also to introduce um, a topic which is of particular importance to them. Um, so we've got a real kind of like nice sort of like sort of cross section of different kinds of topics which sort of touch on on things which have been discussed within the kind of wider sort of DIY bio um, community. So the first half we're just going to sort of run through and like these guys can read these sort of experiences and kind of talk about DIY bio a little bit. Uh, and then in the second half uh, we're going to have a sort of a, a slightly more kind of a, a wider discussion um, covering some of those points. So we're going to bring in so like Gina and Malta and like Brian and like some, some of these guys uh, and Chris Jan and some of these guys and kind of sort of talk over some of the kind of things of, that, uh, that we talk about all the time. Uh, and then we're going to throw out open questions so that anyone can just like pile in and kind of ask to sort of difficult things. Uh, we've been asked all kinds of difficult questions uh, this past week. Uh, being amateur biologists rather than professional biologists, most of the time we're just going to go, well, I, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, really, I really can't tell you, why don't you try it out? Is <laughs> usually the, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the response. Uh, very good. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's, that's, that's me, that's us. That's pretty good. I mean, so, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Carl. Just here. So, 